We're here with uh, Simon Guacan, who is the Vice President of Strategic Marketing for uh, Wesley Clover. Simon, how are you? I'm very well indeed, Rich. How are you? Great. Can you tell us what we're doing in this uh, area of the company? Well, we are now in the uh, Wesley Clover Incubator. Um, we, we have about six or seven companies here, uh, all starting up in various different stages of, of development, from either incubation or acceleration. Uh, it's a very exciting place to work, and uh, we have a lot of uh, very clever graduates who are developing products for, uh, for Mitel and for other Wesley Clover companies. That's great, and uh, we actually had a little talk at uh, IT Expo recently we about this, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. With uh, Terry, you know, and it was uh, very exciting. I'll make sure to link to uh, to that talk from this blog entry. I'm just going to do a quick tour here so people can just get a sense of the high energy environment that I've written about and we've we've heard about before. So, more or less, what we're talking about here, Simon, is. All we uh, have here is. Uh, uh, so, we have Telvio over there. All right. See that logo? Sure. With that, mo that Motorola accreditation. And then here we have Ben Bria. Um, and up here we have a company called Iska that uh, is a virtual concierge uh, for hotels. They're about to do a, uh, an installation into 3,500 rooms in Ch uh, Hilton Hotels in Chicago. Um, I think we can probably even show you the virtual concierge. I think you might be able to get it on your screen. Uh, so this is a, a touchscreen device. Uh, it's designed for uh, hotel rooms Hello. in Chicago. Hi. Hello. This is David Ross. Hi, David. How are you? Nice, nice to, to meet you. Restaurant. Sorry about the video screen in your face. Yeah. So this is a fully integrated concierge for a hotel room. Um, plays music, does things, and, but it allows you to uh, uh, make calls, uh, surf the internet, but also allows you to um, look up services for the hotel. So I'll be in a hotel lobby and see this? Is no, that I'll how be in the hotel room. Oh, every, this is every the room. room in the hotel. Oh, every room in the hotel. I see. Typically yeah. in uh, hotels that are clustered around conference centers, but usually in the downtown core. So uh, that will allow the organizers of a conference to keep everybody connected, to allow the guests and, and attendees to stay in touch with one another, do after-hours blogs and um, group conversation, that sort of thing as well. So real social net networking yeah, kind of... Uh, but, you know, say you're even on vacation and you didn't bring your, your laptop with you, but you want to upload your photos to Facebook, you can do it here through the USB port. Or you can do it wirelessly if uh, you have a nice device with a wireless interface on it. That's great. Um, other things in it, we've got, uh, uh, again, there's a, an attached telephone that you don't see here because it's not quite finished yet. Okay. But uh, it will be an analog phone to allow connection to the hotel's existing analog telephone network. Not every hotel has Cat 5 to the room. So we're able to, to give you access to the phone network for safety and security as well as, uh, you know, not have to lay a whole bunch of new cable to make it happen. And yet you still get the ability to make a VOIP call uh, because the phone is connected to the base system over USB. And uh, the base system has a wireless port, so it's connected to the hotel's wireless network. That's great. And uh, allows two different models there. As far as the, the application goes, there's uh, all kinds of... Uh, options here for advertising, uh, for area services, so we're able to go out into the community and find the local uh, uh, businesses that have an interest in, and get something. So that's a revenue model then for that's the hotels, right? right? Bring everyone and together and, and then for us too. use so ads. It's a recurring revenue stream. Oh, so you are you partnering, or, or I guess has that all been we, worked we out? We have a partner company that provides the advertising services locally. Oh, okay. And Rich, let me That's introduce great. you to Andrew Fisher, who's a Hello, Andrew. colleague of mine. Is Hi, Andrew. How are you? We're doing a little video interview here. Right, so. Yeah, so uh, nice, to nice to meet you. What's your role here? Uh, I'm uh, the person responsible for greenlighting all startups. So oh, really? Uh, okay. I own their uh, business plan, their revenues, uh, everything for the first two years, typically. So that's my job is to, is to do the grunt work, essentially, to get them up and going. So how do you decide when you have all these Critical potential mass, ideas? So yeah, how, how do you figure um, that out? Well, consensus is the number one. Uh, we typically sit down with uh, the executive teams, uh, so everyone from the you know Don Smith, Paul Butcher, Terry, uh, Ron Wellard, um, Steve Spooner, uh, the marketing folks, PLMs, Primes, country heads. Um, so we have a pretty uh, large group of people that are inputting into the into the decision factor. Uh, we have our own internal business case that we're going through. Is it a white space? Uh, do we think the market is at least twenty million dollars? Um, you know, is it a vertical that we have, uh, you know, some capability to produce a product or, or a lead position in? Um, and then we typically go and we try and find the kids that we can actually uh, fit that, uh, that problem set to. Very exciting. Is it too early to ask if uh, any of the, the companies have taken a little bit longer than you had expected? Or? Um, 
Yeah, the early ones, definitely, because we were learning. Um, and, you know, that's part of that's just the chemistry of figuring things out. Uh, the good news is, is those companies are starting to hit their numbers and, and to come along. Um, some of the, 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 the sales cycles also were a bit longer than we expected. The economy so, had to have some well, kind of effect, and that's right? Another big one. We had we had like Netpotest, who's a company that's not here today, produces some middleware specifically uh, off of either Call Manager or Mitel uh, appliances. You know, we had a huge number of POs that were leading up to November of last year that just dis disappeared right. overnight. Uh, and that was very frustrating for us and the team, of course, because they were expecting all of this deal flow that didn't sure. happen. Now, the good news is, is that they you know, they got down on the ground, right? They grounded out. And sure. And they built up their pipeline. And so today, they'll probably close about 20,000 euros this, this quarter. Um, and then we've got a pretty healthy pipeline looking about between 80 and, and 150 next quarter. So it's coming back up again. It's good. Well, I would imagine startups in this environment that are able to grind it out, like you said, and yep. make it through are... It's just stronger. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I mean, this is a, one of the tougher environments that I've yep. seen ever. Yep. And I'm, my experience, yeah, my sentiment, 100 percent there. I've never. Well, in seen some it. ways, telecom in 2001 and 2 was pretty tough as well. It was, but um, you know, that was a different. That was a false. Uh, you know, it was because it was a balloon and it busted and all right. of that. This is worldwide meltdown and uh, delay of every purchasing cycle that we saw and deferment of all purchasing decisions, you know, just fell off the map. Sure. So uh, especially for a startup whose lifeblood is going to be those first revenue and those first customer trials, it was uh, it was pretty terrible times, i got to say. I, I don't think I've ever been through worse. So we're feeling pretty good now because most of us have lived through it. And, in fact, all of our activities are coming up, like, ferociously because a lot of those players that would have been in the market in November don't exist. Or the bigger companies that could potentially have a competitive product now need to have a, another supplier or a younger company to come in and help them with uh, with that vertical market expertise. So we're seeing like a ferocious amount of, uh, of attention right now. Well, good luck. Channel. Good so luck with your efforts, and yeah. nice to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you. Pleasure. Rich, let me introduce you to... Uh, I met. You met. Hello again. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. to see you. How are you? Guys, apologies for the video. I'm going to be videoing everyone, so this is a real this life. Alicia uh, Hi, Alicia. Hi, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Alicia's our VP of marketing at Vimbria, so yeah, but we met down at uh, uh, VoiceCon. VoiceCon. Yeah, in Orlando, I think it was uh, Terry, March, maybe? Uh, February. Yeah, April. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> earlier this year, earlier <laughs> this right. year. Yeah, and Terry did a great job keynoting at uh, IT Expo just uh, it was like three weeks ago. Yeah, it was really uh, captivating. I got a lot of uh, positive feedback. So what's happening with uh, your company? Oh. A lot of exciting things are happening. Actually, I actually have to excuse my voice, so you might want to talk to Alicia. So Alicia. To me, but, okay, tell but, us. Uh, we, um, had a, we had a great uh, – Alicia can tell you a little bit about what we had at Carleton last yeah, week. We so had an outstanding uh, – Yeah, campus-wide test. So we sent out uh, more than 45,000 messages uh, to 27,000 students and faculty on campus, and it went very well. Uh, we've got press coverage from the CBC News, who was actually there filming it. Um, it was a great success, yeah. So basically the, the company, as a reminder to the viewers, uh, notification services, et cetera, right? Yeah. Yes. It's, yeah, it's an uh, intelligent notification solution. So for small and large organizations, they can use it to contact people within their organization or out uh, in the community via a variety of different communication mediums. So uh, phone calls, SMS messaging, email, overhead speakers, uh, intelligent IP paging, um, desktop alerts that pop up and can lock the PC, so all different types of communication mediums. Yeah, the big value that we're seeing from the customers is that they really um, appreciate the ability to have increased reach of their target audience and know that they reached their target audience. So we have that acknowledgement capability as well. So for our initial target market, we've been going after the education version. Sure. Uh, but we've since we met actually in April, we not only have won more customers in education, but we've also won customers in manufacturing, steel, uh, in retail, in uh, restaurant uh, applications. So we're seeing almost in every vertical. So restaurants are, I mean, other than we're out of salmon, don't let anyone order it. What kind <laughs> of what kind of apps would a restaurant have? Well, so interesting. So again, it's this whole uh, you can think compliance. So people can use our, sys our system for critical notifications, revenue generating, and compliance because we have that acknowledgement. We know people received it. So in the restaurants, for example, there's they want to corporate either wants to get a promotion out for the week, and they want all their restaurants. Maybe it's all oh, of them need to have Oh, I see. Okay. So like chains and things like that. Right. I got it. Right. Uh, or it could be product recall. 
okay. uh, situations, and they want to get they have to make sure they get that information. Oh, on a certain that makes period sense. Of time. So and like tainted meat or spinach right. or something like that. Exactly. And so get it out in a certain period of time, and then know that people received it. So that's why they want to use our system because we can send it to their pe like sending an email is okay, but people they don't have their BlackBerry with them, they might not get it. So we also can post messages to the phone. So on the on the phone, you can see text pop up. So, so the really the benefit here is the higher likelihood of the, the recognition of these messages and being able to confirm who for sure got these messages and then dealing with those people who may not have. Exactly. Get it out in a timely fashion, right, and uh, know who received it or who hadn't received it. And you have a record of that as well. And so that's where the compliance comes in that exactly. you were mentioning earlier. Yeah, oh, that's great. So and acknowledgement. Well, it looks like there's a huge opportunity for... for uh, this kind of application. Yeah, we're just seeing so many more uses for it than we even imagined. So we're uh, we're gearing up big time to make it happen. Well, good luck. Thanks, Rich. Let yes. me see you to the book. Guy. Anyways, good to see you. Yeah, again. nice to see you both as well. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Guy. Guy. Hey, Guy, how are you? It's Rich Toronto. He's with Mago, the telecollaboration solution. Oh, great. Okay, okay yeah, so we talked about that a little bit earlier. We did. Yeah, right. and uh, but he can tell you a bit more. It's it's getting great guns right now. All right. Well, uh, we're actually uh, we've gone commercial. So what we're actually doing is uh, defining a new product. Telecollaboration is actually a mix of telepresence, which is immersive high definition video conferencing, with uh, extending uh, shared computer desktops as a mechanism for allowing people to actually uh, collaborate in a group context. So uh, we've actually got technology that includes a new approach to uh, video conferencing. Our codecs are among the most network efficient of anybody out there. Um, it's much more network friendly and can mix with standard enterprise traffic on, uh, on an internet broadband connection. Uh, as I said, the collaboration approach that we're uh, adopting is, is very, very novel, extremely easy to use, and basically involves people um, sharing their desktop with remote locations uh, without having to upload files or not transmit their shared desktops as video signals, which is currently the norm. And uh, we're also basically uh, implementing most of our technology in software on commercial hardware, which basically does two things. It actually allows for a solution that's amongst the most affordable in, in the business, and also allows our resellers to uh, customize the solution and put their own particular stamp on it. So typically we provide the software and they can provide the hardware and, uh, you know, for vendors that they, uh, that they think uh, well, they already have established relationships with. So that's oh. pretty much what we do. So one of the comments I heard was the bandwidth uh, is one-third of what some of the competitive solutions Correct. need? Yeah, it turns out that the width, uh, we're talking true 1080p video. A lot of the existing systems for starters are 720 video. What we're doing in our case is we're running 1080p, but with the technology that we have, we're actually running an average of about two and a quarter megabits for a, a high definition video stream. But uh, the technology, the adaptation that we've added to the codec is such that we actually have like a peak to average bandwidth ratio of only two to one versus 10 to one, wow. which is the norm for the industry. Um, again, other uh, standard codecs would typically require an average of five megabits, whereas we're down at around two. And the other thing that we've added to our implementation is that uh, there's end-to-end -end communication um, that basically tracks what's actually happening on the internet, so it dynamically reduces you know, and plays with the video encoder parameters so that we drop bits per pixel and we do a variety of things to actually, uh, again, allow the, the video signal to be transported even if you have congestion and a lot of other uh, standard uh, internet traffic from other applications running in the enterprise. So, uh, again, that's an area that we've actually got a lot of advantages. Well, good luck. Sure. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Keith. Yep. Thank you, Simon. It was a pleasure. Uh, it was, was, Rich, it's always good to see you.